this is Alley Cat. Meow. And you're listening to Wrestling Cheers. Taking your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. That troubles are all the same You wanna go where everybody knows your name You wanna go where you can see That troubles are all the same You wanna go where everybody knows your name And welcome back to Wrestling Cheers Where everybody knows your name Especially when you're wearing a bright neon fanny pack And that's right, we are Wrestling Cheers We go over things in the Northeast Ohio independent wrestling scene, we preview shows, we review shows, and sometimes we even have interviews along the way. And this is one of those episodes. We have a interview with Evan from Savage Stash. And um got to sit down with him before old wrestling just a couple weeks ago. But actually, you know, we gotta before we get into all that, before we get into everything about that, let's let you know where you can find this show. You know, we are brought to you by the Trending Topics Network and NEO Sports Insiders. Please rate, review, and subscribe to wherever you're listening to this fine podcast. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Podbean, WrestlingCheers.Podbean.com. Head on over to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Give us a follow, like, whatever on there. Facebook.com slash WrestlingCheers, Twitter.com slash WrestlingCheers, and Instagram.com slash WrestlingCheers. Email if you so choose to desire wrestling cheers at gmail.com. We got a merch store over at webmaneuver.net and also here officially on the podcast announcing the winner of the mystery contest. Uh, before we get into that, if you didn't check the video, you haven't checked our feed, uh, the, the mystery prize was or is a Johnny Gargano figure. And it's not just a Johnny Gargano figure, it's going to be a signed Johnny Gargano figure, which is in the process uh, of being signed, getting getting to Johnny and getting signed. And ironically enough, the winner is none other than Caden Ranky. The drawing was done live on Twitter. You can check that tweet out. I uh, did a live video, so there's no 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 collusion. Nobody say that I cheated. It was rigged for him. Nope. No, it was Caden that officially fairly won. All right, um, yeah, this episode we are going to sit down with Evan from Savage Dash. And we had a nice conversation before Old Wrestling. Big shout out and thank you to Marion Fontaine and all of Old Wrestling for allowing me the the space and and the time to set up and record this particular interview. Only got about a half hour or so because Evan did have to set up his Savage Dash set up for the show. So I want to give him enough time to do that. And after it was all said and done of him doing that, came over, got about a good half hour conversation, talk about a bunch of random stuff. And then we get into the five, fave five questions for the show. So I won't hold you up anymore. And, um, I'll try to how we do these interview episodes since I don't really take time for commercial breaks. We're going to have two commercials that'll play one before the interview and one after the interview. So, Let's go into our first commercial, and we will be back with Evan from Savage Dash. And when that's done, one more interview, and we'll come back to wrap up the show. What's up, everybody? This is Alex, Worldwide Killer, coming to you live here for a thrift store. Wait, it's not thrift store driver? Wait a minute. Wrestling who? Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name. I know my name. It's Alex, Worldwide Killer, and you're listening to Wrestling Cheers. And I want to tell you all about Wrestling Cheers t-shirts at whatamaneuver.net. It's a heck of a shirt because where everybody knows your name and wrestling is a game and the game is pain. And pain is what we feel and what we feel, it's real. Whatamaneuver.net, wrestling cheers, do it up. 
for your boy, Alex Worldwide Killer. And we are back on the podcast, and this is kind of a kind of a special, a little bit different. Normally we do people within wrestling. I got I don't remember off the top of my head people we did that wasn't actually some sort of wrestler or involved with a company. We have a, a fellow you know, fan, but kind of an outsider, but a very influential into wrestling culture right now. Uh, I didn't even actually double check with him. Like, do you want to go by your full name or Evan, like, yeah, Evan Cronenberg's fine. Yeah. Evan Cronenberg from the Savage Stash. And you got, if you don't know what the Savage Stash, Savage Stash is, please explain to the listeners. So it's a, a store that started out mostly selling vintage wrestling merchandise, but we started making our own fanny packs and, uh, we're going to do snapback hats very, very soon. Cool, cool. Um, so something that's functional, stylish, it's yeah. good, but it's also retro at the same time. And it's like what kind of we were talking about before we were recording of how, you know, fanny pack culture is just kind of like coming back. And like you, you mm-hmm. contribute a lot to, to rap culture and, and wrestling mm-hmm. kind of like cro- having like a big crossover right, right now. Right, Like you were explaining with, uh, when you can actually say it if you want to. Um, so like when like recently there was a whole... Uh, picture of drake walking around with the the old razor ramon machismo shirt mm-hmm. which has a lot to do with wwe reprinting it yeah, uh, yeah. oh yeah they recently did um and post malone wearing the 316 vest or like the stone cold shirts and all that other stuff um but i also noticed that they were wearing fanny packs and i we had just put out our first version of it mm-hmm. and i thought okay this is a great opportunity to kind of combine the two cultures yeah because i realized that street culture like street clothing culture is heavily heavily influenced from rap which is now going retro yeah so um i just wanted to be kind of part of that in whatever way i could yeah but still do the things that i love which is wrestling yeah because like you do like with um the set like you said selling the vintage clothing which is i never realized until the past year like how big that is right and like how like, well, how much money you could make or just like some of the like things you see I think I almost contributed to eBay because I do this as a like yeah I look back at something I had as a kid and then I go on eBay and I go how much is that going for now right like can I buy it now or am I going to be really mad that I don't still have it mm-hmm. then I could have sold it for right. five six seven hundred dollars right because like we've had like uh, I mean I'm like depending on what how old you are and what you grew up with like like Ninja Turtles oh yeah or, for sure or like Power Rangers or oh, something yeah. like Street that Street Sharks it's, yeah something like I like think with a lot of the Power Ranger stuff coming back, yeah, or like like reintroducing stuff. I'm like, wow, I had a the Dragon Dagger. I loved like everything yeah, with Tommy, Zorg, yeah. And I'm like, all those figures are going for a lot more. And like, if I still would have had them, I could have got something. Yeah, yeah, but would you really want to sell them if you still had them? That's the it, drawback. I think it depends on which one, part of it, right? Like, uh, maybe not the Tommy stuff, mm. but maybe some of the other figures because right. I, I know I had. I think I had the Black Ranger, the Red Ranger. Those I might have been like, okay, if I can get something off of fine, but I'm like, the Dragon Zord, yeah. even the the Megazord set. Oh yeah. Do you remember the the what was it? It was like a, a bracelet that you could put the the like a spinner piece in and then it made the dinosaur noises? Did you ever have that? No. No? Oh man, okay. I wish I had that. <laughs> uh, I think the only thing that I had similar to that, I did I mean I did have the the morpher. Yeah. Which that was always cool. That's then true. um it's a little bit different, but kind of maybe the same. Mm. Captain Planet. Oh yeah, I actually had the the electronic ring. What? Where I didn't you, even know that they made that. Yeah, it's. I think I've looked on eBay. It's it's hard to find it sometimes, and uh. it's, I think it's high price. Um, I'm gonna buy it's, it it's, today. It's a, it's a very bulky thing. Yeah, and then like you can change what's in it. Really? And then it has a button that cycles all the power noises. Brother, dude, like I. As I, soon I, as this interview's over, I'm buying this <laughs> on eBay. Dude, like, it's not so, even kidding. Like. It's one of those lost. I think in the '90s, there's a lot of toys that are just lost yeah. to to fans because like right. maybe you didn't know about it. Maybe your local store that you went to didn't carry it. Or you like you. For me, like I couldn't have certain things because of the uh, economy at the time. Like my parents yeah. didn't have a lot of money, so yeah, I I just went over to my friends' houses and I played with their shit. Yeah, you know? and then um, now as an adult, I can go back yeah, yeah. and get those things, and that's that actually ties right into the wrestling merchandise. Because yeah. it's the stuff you saw as a kid in the catalogs Dude, yeah. or on TV, and you're like, man, I wish I had that. And then my job is to come in and go, oh, well, guess what? I have it here for you, and mm-hmm. I'll bring it to a show or mm-hmm. you know, sell it online, that kind of thing. Like the early 90s merch is just nuts. Exactly. Because like you, go, I, I, sometimes I'll see pictures. Because I know I had a subscription to the magazine. Yeah. And like 
the teddy bears. I would remember. Um, yeah, we were just talking about that. Yeah, the Beanie Babies. Well, not even the Beanie Babies. I'm talking like the early '90s. Oh, I think I know what Pre- you're talking like, about. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I know Brett had one. Yeah, Doink had one with a little dink. Yeah, he might have. Razor had one, I think. Yeah, Razor. I remember the Razor. Yeah, one. The Razor. I loved Razor back then. I think most people did. Like. I right? think it's what, oddly enough, it's why I like Scarface so much. Yeah. Like later as an adult, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, he was really. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I think there is a song on the soundtrack, something about the Razor's Edge. Really? I, th- I think there was something I just recently found out that's linked Razor's Edge to Scarface. And I went, no, what? Oh, what? man. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's really Maybe cool. Maybe it's some sort of lyric to one of the songs. I can't remember. Hmm. I just happened to come across it. I was like, that's nuts. That's really cool that they tied it in like that. What was like your first. Uh, m- wrestling merch that you had as a kid but, but, like probably the first comes to mind the first thing yeah. those old um ljn toys you know okay. like yeah, the yeah, hard yeah, rubber yeah. ones i had which one did i have for some reason i remember having a mean gene and okay. i don't know why because i didn't do anything with it yeah i definitely had a vince mcmahon and i had a hillbilly gym and i used to beat the shit out of those things <laughs> yeah like to see them now people still have them in packaging or like with the paint yeah. on them like that's kind of sad but really cool because you didn't have fun with that you know yeah you didn't do anything with that what was the point i know like i like i know i had some ljns but i also know i had a babysitter around that time mm. and i think like a lot of people like would donate toys whenever and there yeah. was like there was some ljn dolls really and i think about them and i'm like wow like i can't remember which ones i had and didn't have because mm-hmm. it's like i remember the mean gene i remember big john stud king right. kong bundy and all that and oh man i forgot about king kong the thing was with me, like those, like I don't know about you, like what, what was your favorite uh, generation? For me, it's Hasbro. Hasbro, I would say, yeah, Hasbro did some really solid designs. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, I would probably agree with you. I think so. Yeah, those are really classic. When I think of like nostalgic toys, it's always the the Hasbro ones, mm-hmm. and they have great. If you look on um, online, you can actually find like the blueprints, like the, yeah. the uh, production, like when they were doing the planning and the and the painting and all that other stuff yeah. seeing the different variations of those is really interesting to see what could have been aka Zack Ryder's Twitter I know exactly it's all <laughs> just Zack Ryder like when he like threw something off recently like the the, the mid 90s wrestling buddy idea i'm like yeah. why didn't we do that exactly like diesel uh brad hart because that that's actually oddly enough my favorite era really okay. like the federation era was cool yeah. and the you know the attitude era was cool but to me like my favorite matches bret hart Shawn michaels oh yeah wrestlemania 12 my two favorite wrestlers f- on my 10th birthday oh wow yeah so like okay. seeing that man like yeah. that's all, like to me that era is all about them too and i love yeah. diesel and that's i think when i really fell in love with professional wrestling mm-hmm. so knowing like oh i could have had a wrestling buddy of them because i think i had I had the Macho Man. I ended up, yeah. what sucks, I ended up giving that away at, like, really? at an age. I think I gave it to a friend of mine's mom who loved Macho Man. How old were you? Uh, 12 maybe like oh, it yeah. wasn't it wasn't okay. like that it was just okay. more like that like, did you get it, numbers or what no 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 <laughs> it just more like it was her favorite wrestler and i'm uh, just like well, it's just sitting around yeah you can have it if you want like i don't care like right. i didn't like miss it but now i yeah. look back i'm like i kind of i don't know if i want that one i kind of want the warrior one yeah or hogan right and like i'll see how much those are oh the macho man one. i think that goes for well, you would know. Yeah. <laughs> Probably that's a good, like, close it's, to 100? Um, it depends depending. on the condition. If it was, like, brand new, definitely 100. Like, if it's in the box, you could get up to, like, 150. Yeah. But if it's, like, one of the loose ones, it's all about condition. Yeah. 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 It's probably a little dirty, but that could probably be clean. You could clean it out. Yeah, you take it to a dry cleaner or something. Yeah. Dude, like... It'd be worth it. That brought a lot of memories for me. For me, like, also, too, like, my favorite... I think when I think of my first merchandise, mm-hmm. I kind of forget, always forget about figures. Oh, yeah. I think of the foam belt era because that's that was real big when we were growing up right dude yeah like um you could be your own champion the first show i went to the wrestlemania 10 revenge tour oddly enough friend of ours gregory iron that was his first wrestling show we happened to go to the same exact show wow and uh as as my dad gave uh, got me the the foam intercontinental belt yeah which at that time like you know the how they had the older heavyweight championship yes that always seemed weird it is weird um they never made one for the Winged Eagle, which to me, that's my favorite world championship. I think they didn't. They, I feel like they did. The Winged Eagle? Uh, not of that era. Oh, okay. I, I, because they did the more Hogan. They kept that Hogan f- uh, black because it was foam black. Right. And then regular, you know, the oh, yeah. on the side. Like they never did the, the Winged Eagle for some, maybe, well, maybe Zach Ryder knows there's a prototype that they I'm tried. Sure and if they he didn't, has he didn't it, like you know, it. yeah, I'm sure if anybody has it, it's him. But I think like I got that. The Razor Ramon necklace. Yeah. Other thing I wish I had. Was that the single one? The yeah, single dog? The one with the, um, 
their director direction, whatever you want to call him. I know he posted one recently, yeah. like how he won one too. Mm-hmm. Um, the Tatanka Tomahawk. Wow, the foam one. Yeah, yeah, man, those are hard to find. And I got a friend of mine, like we use it as a prop in a talent show. Yeah, and he ripped it. He's he's told me like so many times. He's like, I feel so bad for that. You're still friends with him? Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> he's actually my best friend. Oh okay. But he even like said later, he's like, I keep wanting to go on eBay to buy you another one. Wow. And he's like, they're so expensive. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Trust me, I know. <laughs> we know, yeah. Like that's a like a really because I don't think I've ever owned another foam thing, and that's is that you think that's why you're a little gun shy now? No, no gun shy. I don't know, just that. That was always like cool because it wasn't like a foam thing like you you like put your hand like on a foam finger or yeah. a foam hand yeah because I remember that you we had the Austin one yeah the Hogan you know those areas you know the number one stuff but right like the, the Tomahawk was cool that in the um the hacksaw two by four oh yeah those, was those were awesome the shame about those is that you know they start to rot after a while because it's just like foam you know yeah so if you find one in good condition there's no reason why that shouldn't fetch a hundred dollars you know and it was probably like five bucks probably. At the time? Maybe a little bit less than that, even. I don't even know. Depending, on, Probably depending on the show, where you got it. And yeah. that's... I know. I don't know if you could get it in the catalog. It might have just been a live event thing, right? Mm, Not that I remember. I almost want to say it was only a live event, because I don't remember those you know, being something you could get. Maybe. Right. I don't know. Because right around like that... Now I got to do research. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a big question now. Mm-hmm. Anyway, man, so like... You're here at Old Wrestling. Right. Like, you've been doing a lot of traveling lately, too. Yeah. Like, where's every place you've been? Um, I, Rhode Island. I was in Maine. I was in... I was supposed to go to Nashville. I didn't do that, unfortunately, uh, for SUP Wrestling. Friends with of ours. That. Yeah, you know. Um, Cleveland. I've been in Dayton. I've been in Cincinnati. Pretty much most of the East Coast. Virginia. I've been to Richmond, you know. Uh, I need to go down to Fest Wrestling down to Florida. Yeah. I need to be part of that. That looks really fun. Um, yeah, just East Coast for right now, and I'm trying to move myself out west. We were in New Orleans for WrestleMania this year. That's nuts. That was a really big show with Spring Break and uh, Matt Riddle's Bloodsport. Congrats to Matt Riddle and soon to be Janela. That would be that's going to be great. The next one uh, in New York will be there. So I'm already gearing up for next year. Dude, that's that's crazy. It's nuts. As soon as as soon as WrestleMania wrapped this year, I told. GCW, I was like, I don't care where you're doing this. Mm-hmm. I need to be here next year. Whatever needs to happen, I'll do it. I think even if it wasn't like last year, like just recently with uh, Lost in New York, like yeah. that, sh- that show blew up. Another it was bonkers. Uh, you know, another friend of ours, uh, Marco Stunt. Marco Stunt like, showed out. Yeah. Uh, like I started following him because of uh, Sup. Yeah. And I was like, I think the first time I saw him, like, oh my god, this guy's this guy's pretty cool. He's right. like, he's high flying, yeah. but he can also be very funny. Like I think I watched his second appearance first and later I went back to watch his first one mm-hmm. and he just walks and goes hi I'm tiny <laughs> like I was like oh my god this guy is awesome he's got a great personality man mm-hmm. and he, he knows how to roll with it and mm-hmm. like he's like yeah he knows he looks like a kid and everything and he's gonna make the best of that and the moment that he had yeah there at you know lost in New York just I like that whole night like I was actually out uh, I think we were doing like grocery shopping yeah and like all of a sudden I started seeing about something like, okay I was I wasn't sure if I was gonna watch this but right. now I'm buying. Twitter. I'm buying this because this is amazing. Twitter was blowing up, blowing up that night. And then him. it's like really watching someone like get to see them before they kind of like get that moment. Yeah. Where if I'd have said Marco Stunt like in this area, it'd been like who? I don't know who he is. Right. I'm like, well, you know, Southern Ground Pro, get Powerbomb. You know, mm-hmm. you know ch- check him out. Now right. it's like now they're like Marco Stunt. Like I listened to a couple podcasts and last week, they didn't, or it'll now be two weeks ago, they didn't know who Marco Stunt was. Exactly. But now they're all like, over the place. They're like, yeah, this guy Marco Stunt. I'm like. Dude, this is... I'm proud for my dude. Oh, yeah. I think everybody should be. I mean, I know a lot of people within the industry are happy to see him, uh, you know, riding the success of that show just because they know that he puts in the time. Yeah. The work, you know, and he's got a bright future and he's really talented. Really, what, really talented. And like Cody Rhodes putting him over like yeah. hardcore. That's just like... Because I know there are people out there that don't like Cody Rhodes and I'm like, I don't care what you think. That right, like this kind of action, yeah. like that's why you should like him or at least like that aspect cause right that's just, that's just awesome you i mean the whole point of i think the industry is trying to bring everybody else up and elevate everybody else you mm-hmm. know and i think that cody really understands that aspect mm-hmm. and even if he's been shunned by some indie wrestling fans he's done a lot for indie wrestling yeah just on his own like in the, in his matches yeah. he might not be okada level right now yeah but he the thing is that he tries to match everybody he yeah. does his best every single time. Yeah. And like, 
I know with him going to like Alpha One and like hearing some of the stuff he does there, mm-hmm. like that's it's like it's cool to see a guy who who could have the biggest ego in the world coming straight out of WWE right. with his pedigree of his brother and yeah. his dad. He seems to be one of the most level headed dudes of that type of pedigree, sure. and it, it's so awesome. Well, we were actually I was actually lucky enough to see his first indie show. We were at Evolve in Maryland. Okay, and. He showed up in a suit, and I thought, okay, for sure, this guy is going to be, like, really, you know, big-headed about everything. He had a meet-and-greet. It was out the door. He spent 10 minutes talking to each fan yeah, and thanking them and, like, being personal and asking them actual questions mm-hmm. and getting to know them and letting them know that he really appreciated yeah. their time mm-hmm. and their um, belief in him to go from WWE to doing what he wanted to do and living his dream. Yeah. You know, and being his own person. Yeah, that's like he, like he makes it his own. Yeah. Like with uh, like creating actually championship ring. Yeah. And everything, and I don't know people can say what they want about the Bullet Club, but him joining it, I felt added something, and it, it did help with the transition of Adam Cole leaving to where I felt like what we would have ended up seeing with Adam Cole is what we did see with right. Cody. So he got to like we had a cool transition. He was a guy that he handles it so so well. That's the thing. No stage is ever too big or too small for yeah. him. And yeah. that's what I really admire about Cody. But I think I've met him. I know I met him at ROH at the Supercard of Honor mm-hmm. in Orlando. Had like a little conversation with them. Right. And then I seen him a couple months later, New Era. Uh, not New Era, but uh, Northeast Wrestling. Right. When they, they came to Ohio and had another little conversation. With, like just so level-headed, so awesome. And Great he, did, he did the greatest photo bomb too. How's that? I did. Um, was talking with Flip. Oh, okay. And this was right in the middle, like everything with being the elite. Right. And like while I'm taking a picture with him and I got a villain, a villain club shirt on mm-hmm. and he's looking all scared, you just see Cody Rhodes give this like dirty look. Oh, he's snarling in the background? Yeah. That's and awesome. it's like that reaction was one of the few times I've had someone from the Bull Club take my picture uh-huh. and put it in one of their tweets. Really? It just was kind of funny because wow. the like, flip might have been saying something in another conversation and you just see this this close up of mm-hmm. flip and Cody from that picture. Yeah. And I'm just like, that's pretty cool. That is really that is pretty cool. crazy. That's awesome, man. All right. We're going to, we're going to start to wrap this show up cause we are getting close to doors opening. And uh, what we like to do, or what we're starting to do here on wrestling cheers is do the fave five questions. Okay. Now these five questions are in the style of Booker T as in there's more than five. Okay. <laughs> cause if you've ever watched him on SmackDown back in the day, right. He always said fave five, like 20 times. Oh, of course. So we're going to, we're going to go with six questions. Sure. And um, let's see where we can start here, because I have, I have a nice little... All my answers are going to be shucky ducky quack quack. Oh, my goodness. Just, uh... <laughs> all right. Um, all right, since you you know a little bit of both about this, I don't know exactly where you stand on this. Mm. Sheets or Wawa? Sheets all the way. Ooh. Sheets all the way. You Did you realize how quickly I said yeah, it? Yeah, that was... Off the bat. There's no edit mark there. Mm-hmm. I didn't... There's nothing. It's just boom. I, I knew exactly. when When you said sheets... That was it. I knew it. That's the answer every single time. Superior in every way. Better uh, staff, better sandwiches, better production, better gas, oddly enough. I've never, it's a gas station. I'm not never, like gas at, from, from eating it. Yeah. Like, I, I think I've never really got gas from Walmart. Because, like, obviously here, this, yeah. is, this is Sheets country. Right, right. And, like... Oh, I this actually, is I don't, God's country. I did, I, did a, I did a Facebook poll once. Like, so people are like, what's a Wawa? And I'm like... Yeah, I'm figured I was gonna get this reaction, yeah. but it's kind of just it's more for people who travel mm-hmm. and like just to see what that reaction would be. But yeah, right. Sheets I, is superior. Of the two, I do prefer sheets. Okay, there we but, go. I thought I was gonna have to flip all this like well, equipment off this table. <laughs> well, the 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 third option because I always say, I always say sheets or wobble, or do you have a third option? Because there's little areas right, that have like their own like, pockets. Here it's gecko, mm-hmm. which to me is amazing. Right, like right now they have a general South chicken sub oh wow yeah that sounds really good. this is a get-go yeah that get-go okay you happen to catch one on your way out i was i was gonna I'll make point. time to catch one yeah. yeah and then i know around thanksgiving they have the pilgrim and i've told wawa i think has something like yeah. this it's, a, it's like a stuffing bread uh turkey breast uh mashed potatoes gravy and the option of adding cranberry, cranberry sauce, sauce. yeah mm, that's yep. oh it's the american the, classic right there. it's the best um, I would say if there was a third one, there's uh, Royal Farms down in like Maryland, Baltimore. They have amazing chicken. Okay, yeah, amazing my, chicken. My girlfriend yeah. is Amanda's here. Yeah, she's got family out in uh, Maryland, mm-hmm. so she goes out to Maryland all, okay. like at least once a year. And like, yeah, okay, so she's sitting there saying, "Hell yeah." <laughs> That's unfortunate though. She's way better. 
Uh, Sponsor me sheets. Ooh. At sheets. Uh, question number two. I think we haven't done this one, but this is, I, I, didn't, I was surprised that there's people that have different opinions on this. Mm-hmm. When you're sleeping, are your, is your bedroom door open or closed? Closed. Closed? Okay, okay. I'm like paranoid about that for some reason. I've never been like, I've never had my house invaded. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I, I just feel like safer that way, you know? I don't know. I also have a bat next to my bed just in case. So. <laughs> the funny thing is, like, I'm more, uh, I think I grew up with my bedroom being right off the living room, so mm-hmm. I slept with the door shut. Right. Later on, after I moved, I was a little bit older, I had a room in the basement, and I would work in third shift. Okay. I had one window, and that was covered, so I wanted pitch black, so right. I slept with the, with the door closed. Mm-hmm. Now I'm, like, in my 30s, and my girlfriend, she's like, why don't we sleep with the door open? I'm like, because yeah. I've never done it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm like, to me, it's like it doesn't seem like I'm sleeping. Really? Because, like, soon, well, depending on how late I want to sleep in, like, as soon as the, you know, sun comes up, it's like, all right, I'm up. Yeah. But if it's pitch black, I can sleep in a little bit longer if I want to. That's true. So. Fair enough. I agree with that. Uh, question number three will go, one of my favorite questions, bacon or sausage? Oh, that's tough. What kind of bacon? What kind of sausage? Ooh. See? Now well, 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 there, well, there's... Canadian second, bacon? Well, there's backup questions for each. For for bacon, it's, well, well crispy or not crispy. Mm-hmm. And for sausage, it's link or patty. Oh. I would say not crispy for bacon and patty for sausage. Okay. Uh, that's also a regional thing. That's a Maryland thing. We like it to oink when we eat it. Yeah. But the patty is just easier for us. Easy to cook. Yeah, I think I've had one person say like, "Well, if a patty for a sandwich, and then other than that, I'd rather have have link." Which I'm like, "Well, yeah, I'm yeah, that makes rare." Sense. I, I mean, I've had a sausage sandwich with link sausage. It's mm-hmm. weird. Yeah, it's but, awkward. You know, but yeah, other than I think outside of that aspect, yeah, I do. I mean, for me, I'm a link guy. But. Yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, link yeah. is great. I like the casing. Mm-hmm. That nice snap when you pop into yeah. it. Yeah, and then uh, I dip it. And, uh, or put or just uh, smother it in syrup. Maple syrup? It's All right. The thing I learned as a kid, I'm like, that's really good. Actually, you know what that, what's very good I learned in my travels? Blueberry syrup on sausage. Try I'm going to try that. Try it sometime. Next time I'm at an IHOP or uh, Cracker Barrel. There we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. Well, that's the real question. Cracker Barrel or Waffle House? <sighs> See, now I'm flipping. See? Well. I'm interviewing you. <laughs> Kick Out at 2 kind of asked me this question, and I was like, when it comes to breakfast food, yeah, I'm Shoney's. Okay, because that breakfast Shoney's. buffet is just a no one beats that breakfast buffet. Right. If I pick two of what's on there, yeah, the French toast sticks uh-huh. and the sausage patty. Right on. Or no women. No, I think the sausage they do links. So you must really like Scott Steiner. I do. Well, when he was at AIW, trust me, I got that picture. <laughs> I wanted to Did bring you have one a Shoney's of my- shirt. No, I have two oh, Shoney's man. bears. I almost wanted to get them signed. Wow. One of them signed. Yeah, just, but I'm like, eh. See, I can't find Shoney's Bears, so you and I need to link up. Really? Yeah, I, gotta, I, I, one of those. Two, I want one of the older ones. I got one in a hoodie, and I forget the other one. Mm-hmm. But I know the one when I was a kid, he was in overalls yeah. and a red shirt. Like, right. those I really want to find. Because that, that's another one of my things that got got misplaced. Uh see. So we're on question number, I think, four. Ketchup on hot dogs. No. Mustard all the way. Mustard all the way. It has to be mustard. Okay. I'm. I grew up with ketchup on it. Mm-hmm. So then to find out, like when I got older, I'm like, oh no, like you were doing it wrong this whole well, time. Well, not say doing it wrong. It's just people. People are against it. Like people from Chicago are like, hell no, right? You're you're a sinner. And I'm like, well, but see, Chicago's. They think that deep dish pizza is pizza when it's not. Okay, so we're we're gonna avoid that question okay, because yeah. is Chicago deep dish? That's one of the possible questions. Yeah. Is Chicago deep dish pizza? No, it's it's like a lasagna. It's not a pizza. It's a casserole. I think. I don't mind when people say casserole or lasagna, but when people are like, it's a pie, and I'm like, no. I'm like, no, all no. pizza's a pie? <laughs> like, that's a- I mean, that's just like a like an umbrella term, really. Yeah. But yeah, deep dish is not pizza. I'm okay. sorry, Chicago. Okay, okay. They do great wrestling, but not great pizza. That's true. That is very true. Yeah. Uh, question number five, physical media or digital? Are we talking about like DVD gimmicks or... Either because like I do, I've realized people do have one for like movies, one for music. Yeah, I would say digital for everything. It's just so much easier now. I don't mm-hmm. remember like I've had to move a lot. Oh, I'm, I'm so okay. tired. I don't know yeah. if I can curse on this. I'm so you tired. Can. I don't care of fucking moving DVDs, oh, and CDs, yeah. and cassettes, and I just like put it on my computer so I don't have to fucking worry about it. You well, know, 
Well, if you have VHSs, just send them to Jesse. Oh, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> I've already talked to him about it. I'm going to send him a whole box. Um. Okay. Fifth question. We'll go with... Oh, damn. I meant to do another one, but yeah, I'll have to skip the AJ Gray question. We'll go with the Wilkman question from Kick Out of Two, since we mentioned them. All right. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? It happens around Christmas. So technically, in that canon, yes. Do but you, is it? Say, do you believe it's a Christmas movie? I, w- I watched it around Christmas just because I'm tired of other Christmas movies. Okay. Does that make sense? I mean, you know, I can kind of get that aspect of it, but I always feel like there, there are other like non-stereotypical Christmas because I know like uh, Miracle on 34th Street whether right. you don't like the Christmas story uh-huh. don't say that too close to Cleveland I was going to say we're right in that in that town I, I do enjoy it and after going there a couple times yeah and I always feel like that's the movie that I will throw on TV like mm-hmm. during the marathon like that. that's background noise oh of course yeah but that's childhood background noise oh yeah grow up with that the, the question that kind of goes with that mm-hmm. favorite Christmas movie that's tough. Probably Christmas Story because it can be background or you could focus on it. Okay. You know? And it's it's been there forever as far as I... Such a such a long... And it came like out of nowhere where yeah. it was around and then it started to get played on on repeat and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden people were going, yeah, Christmas Story. This is a great Christmas yeah, movie. Yeah, everybody's talking about it like they knew about it. Yeah. Like, it just happens to be on 24 hours mm-hmm. for like a week. All right. And your last question, the question that I always tailor to people... Mm-hmm. And uh, this is kind of a two-part question, and it's going to put you on the spot. Okay. Favorite sponsored Savage Stash Oh, brother, you know I can't say that. Dude. They're all my favorite. That's why I sponsor them. (laughs) You know? The backup for that, because I was like, I'm kind of expecting that question. I answer, so that's maybe, Uh okay. That's That's a political answer. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite promotion you've been to? GCW. Okay. GCW is okay. fantastic. I love working with them. I love working with every um, company that I've been at. Uh, Limitless, uh, What Wrestling, Nova Pro, Sup. I'm going to do more stuff with. I'd love to work more with old res- old time wrestling. I mean, right there, that's two of my favorites: uh, Nova and uh, Sup. There like, you go. That's man. just. But GCW is a class act. They mm-hmm. have done so much for my company mm-hmm. and been so understanding, and they've worked with me really really well and we mesh together perfectly they've given me a lot of opportunities and um we're growing together so i always appreciate what they've done for us yeah awesome man any uh final thoughts or last minute plugs before you go no i i love this podcast i'm gonna uh, retweet the shit out of this link when i get it awesome i just want you to know that um Come to Oldie, Oldie's Time Wrestling. Is it Oldie? Is it Oldie Wrestling? Uh, I've, I've, two I've, I've talked with Fontaine about this. He uh, says it's whatever. It's either whatever old wrestling. wrestling or Oldie Wrestling. Okay. I've always said old wrestling. Old wrestling. Yeah. Okay. I would say Oldie Wrestling. But that's, that's, that's Just to be it, different. Well, you know? well, like Fontaine has said, like it's it's what, whatever you want it to be. He's mm-hmm. like, I've, I've heard both. It doesn't matter to me. Right. I think he's like, as long as you come. Call whatever you want. Of course, yeah. And these are fantastic shows with great people that pop in and show up. Mm-hmm. And there's no reason to miss these. Mm-hmm. It's a great setting. It's a great production. The fans are fantastic. Everybody gets into it. What is there not to love? You know, it's the like throwback version, no pun intended, to mm-hmm. Shakara. Yeah. To yeah. where like we're going back to the early 1900s. Exactly. And, but putting that Shakara style in, and two, also it's like a really mixed pot of a lot of talent. Mm-hmm. You might not see all these guys together under the same roof. Right. Because you'll, you'll pull people from AIW, they'll pull people from OCW, they'll pull people from Rockstar and Dayton. Right. And other states in general. So it's just like, it's always cool to see what Fontaine has in store for this show. Always fun. Always entertaining. They know the people that they're catering to and they do a really good job doing it. So other than oldie wrestling, um, Sickening Pictures is my one yep. of my favorite companies out of Ohio. They're great. They're doing people. great stuff. Can't wait for Powerbomb to come out. And that's really about it. That's all I can really think of off the top of my head. I was just talking about that with them yesterday. Uh, I was oh, told power bomb. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I was just told that I got a because I was an extra in the uh, Mount Carmel scene. Oh yeah, I, there's I got a good I guess clo- not close up but there's a good moment where I'm yelling holy shit. Yeah, and that's kind of like focused on me. And I'm like, that's cool. You're I in a movie, dude. Yeah, you gotta I make came, your IMDb page. Yeah, I came from I came from an acting background. Like I actually have. Oh look at that. And tragedy. Yeah, tragedy, you know what I mean? So I was like, it's is kinda that cool. why you're a big cool. production fan? Partially. Okay. Partially. Right. And that's always, it's great people. Yeah. They're good they guys. They're all great people. Uh, all right, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Hey, guys. 
guys, Righteous Jesse here from the Kick Out of Two podcast. And after you get done listening to Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, you should come on over and check out an episode of the Kick Out of Two podcast. Maybe you want to hear Stevie Richards talk about conspiracy theories. Maybe you're in the mood to hear Dr. Dan read Twas the Night Before Christmas. We got you covered on both of those, as well as interviews from Mandy Fernandez, Jimmy Rave, Tommy End, Chris Hero, Al Snow, and so many others. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at KOAT Podcast, and you can check us out on iTunes and SoundCloud. So that is the wonderful Evan from Savage Stass. And like I said, huge shout out to not only Old Wrestling, Marion Fontaine, that whole crew, but for him to come on to this show, I would love for him to be on more podcasts coming up. Huge, I think, um, kick out at two. Is is going to be someone who's going to have time to put Evan on, and that won't. They'll have a different type of interview that I know will be amazing. So you're going to want to check that out. So uh, let's let's uh, wrap the show up, and we'll head on out of here. So you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Facebook.com slash wrestling cheers, Twitter.com slash wrestling cheers, and Instagram.com slash wrestling cheers. You can also find myself at heavy set three three zero. Just the same way on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Heavyset330, Twitter.com slash Heavyset330, and Instagram.com slash Heavyset330. Email for the show, if you so choose a desire, wrestling cheers at gmail.com. Still got that merch store over at whatamaneuver.net, and please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you're listening to us at. Whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Podbean Wrestling Cheers, dot podbean.com check out all our friends on the trending topics network such as all beer inside the eurovision showcase and old school at the movies and check out our other podcasting friends such as pod van dam adults benefits of podcasting center stage that's s-e-n-t-e-r stage super fantastic podcast the road home from wrestling check out uh interview that i did it was live on facebook so you can actually go check it out live through th- that way, or it's a regular podcast interview on their podcast feed, so check that out. Also, kick out at 2 and the Indie Cast, and check out our other friends that don't have podcasts. Thrift Store Jobber, Rebel Life Media, you heard them here today. The Savage Dash, check them out. Pick yourself up a fanny pack. It's only about $10, and I know if you use the promo code the only one i know of i believe it's burly boy dd you can go to derek director derek direction you go to his social media check that out i believe you get 10 percent off of using his code that's what i did to get mine so do do that check out the savage dash of course set tab photo ringside shots photography sickening pictures neo sports insiders and the official graphics designer of wrestling cheers moy boy designs that will do it for us here on Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, especially when you know Sheets is better than Wawa. Later. Making your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name And we're all these like you can You're the big boy of wrestling Rose are all the same